In today's video, we're going to be talking about why superheroes today are so jacked. This is happening right now, coming at you. Hello to all of my jacked and ripped nerds alike. Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. So the simple answer to the question, why are superheroes so muscular is, well, they're superheroes and they're supposed to be strong and strong equals muscular. Yeah, I guess you could rationalize it that way, but there's really a lot more to it. If you compare the manner in which superheroes are drawn today, or even in the 1990s, to the way they were drawn in the Golden Age and in the Silver Age, you're going to notice that superheroes in the modern era are really a lot more muscular. Now, you can chalk that up to, say, art styles developing a lot since the Golden Age and the Silver Age, but there's really a lot more going on culturally that can explain why superheroes today are a lot more muscular than they were in the past. Culturally speaking, I feel that there are three main reasons why superhero muscle has developed so much over the years, and those are the 1977 documentary Pumping Iron, the influence of Arnold Schwarzenegger, and rock star artists. I'm really gonna try and get through this without any Arnold impressions. Yeah! Oops. So let's unpack that a little bit because those things that I listed are from like three completely different mediums. So let's start first with the 1977 documentary Pumping Iron. So if you're not familiar with the 1977 documentary Pumping Iron, I'll just kind of explain that a little bit briefly. This is a documentary that documents Arnold Schwarzenegger's training life in the 1977 and everything that he did, everything that he, that he ate in order to prepare for the Mr. Olympia contest. Because if you don't know, in the 1970s, that was the era of the heyday of Arnold's fame in bodybuilding. You really could say with some measure of accuracy that this documentary and Arnold Schwarzenegger himself put bodybuilding on the map and really brought it to mainstream North American culture. Now, if you are in the age range of 40 and below, you're probably looking at me and you're like, what are you talking about? You probably grew up always remembering gyms being everywhere and people working out and the fitness industry being in your face. But it wasn't always like that. Before Pumping Iron and Arnold Schwarzenegger, bodybuilding was really kind of a joke and it certainly was not mainstream. It really was this kind of underground culture in which only a select few people actually participated in. Nowadays, it's not uncommon to hear about the multitudes of actors that work really hard at the gym and get their diets in order to prepare for particular roles in their Hollywood films. But in the past, it was very, very rare to find an actor who actually worked out. And this is especially true in the 1950s and below. I remember when I first started acting in the early 50s, not, not, not many actors worked out at all. In old time action films and westerns, we knew that the central character was strong because the script pretty much said he was strong and the, the way he moved and the way he did certain things exuded this strength of persona. In the past, no one ever wanted to lift weights because back then there were so many misconceptions about bodybuilding, such as lifting weights is bad for your joints, or lifting weights can cause a heart attack, or the only people that engage in weightlifting are insecure guys who have nothing to show except their muscles. Bodybuilding was not taken seriously at all. They thought it was a joke, they thought it was bad for you, they thought it was kid stuff that is only for comic books, right? And you, you could see this with the bodybuilding ads that we all remember from uh, the comic books in the 1960s and 70s with the famous Charles Atlas. As an aside, one of my all-time favorite comic book ads is the Charles Atlas ad, which is called The Insult That Made a Man Out of Mac. I absolutely love this one, it's hilarious. So Arnold Schwarzenegger comes along and he wins all these Mr. Olympia contests and this documentary called Pumping Iron is made about him and he really puts bodybuilding on the map. How? Because he brought a new view to bodybuilding, and that was bodybuilding with personality. The greatest feeling you can get in a gym, or the most satisfying feeling you can get in the gym, is the pump. Let's say you train your biceps. 
blood is rushing into your muscles, and that's what we call the pump. It's as satisfying to me as uh, coming is, you know, as uh, having sex with a woman and coming. And so can you believe how much I am in heaven? I'm like uh, getting the feeling of coming in the gym, I'm getting the feeling of coming at home, I'm getting the feeling of coming backstage when I pump up, when I pose out in front of 5,000 people, I get the same feeling. So I'm coming day and night. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs> Again, bodybuilders were always seen as these outcasts, these insecure guys with who all they had was muscle and no brains. But Arnold changed that stereotype and that stigma. He showed that bodybuilders can not only have muscles, but they could have this really amazing, fun personality. <laughs> People were at least partially inspired by the dedication and commitment that Arnold Schwarzenegger showed in Pumping Iron. But if they weren't inspired then, they definitely were inspired by the 1980s, by the time that Arnold Schwarzenegger hit the big screen. So Arnold was now casted to play in his first big budget Hollywood film, Conan the Barbarian. And to say that Conan Barbarian was a success is definitely an understatement. For the first time ever on the big screen, people actually saw an actor who looked the part of the character that they were playing in terms of physique. And what followed Conan the Barbarian was an era of absolute jacked muscle in Hollywood. You had one action film after another being pumped out in the 1980s featuring all these different action stars with huge muscles like Stallone and Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren. It was just this era of big guns, both figuratively and literally. You really could see this development of muscle culture portrayed beautifully in comic books. If you look at these characters and how they were drawn in the Golden Age and in the Silver Age, you're really going to see that there's not really a lot of focus on their muscles at all. Now the 1970s comes along, which is the era in which we get pumping iron, you're starting to see a little bit more of a focus on muscle. Then the 1980s and the 1990s come around and you really can see the muscle during these eras. You see a stark difference when you compare the muscles from the 80s and 90s to the ones that you see in the 1970s. And that is due at least in part to rock star artists. The concept of rock star artists is one that we've talked about on the channel before. And these are artists that exploded in popularity in the late 1980s because fans absolutely adored their art and were buying up everything that they were doing. So all of these rock star artists were Gen Xers. They were born in the late 1960s and in the early 1970s. So they grew up on films featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger and Van Damme and Stallone and all these really heavily muscled action heroes. So their view of what a man and what a hero should look like was vastly different than that of their predecessors. So naturally these artists were drawing their characters like the action heroes that they remember growing up. And through this, they really established a new industry standard when it came to drawing superheroes. Say what you will about the 1990s in comic books. Yes, it was a crazy era for the industry, but one thing you can't deny is that one thing that hasn't changed since the late 1980s and early 1990s is the way in which superheroes are drawn with these big muscles, for the most part. So there you have it. Those are the cultural reasons in which I believe that superheroes are a lot more muscular today than they were in the past. I would love to hear from you and what you think about this topic. Why do you believe that superheroes today are more muscular than they were in the past? Leave me a comment. So that about does it for our video today. Really, really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it and you wanna see more videos like this, please check out our channel. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing and leave a like. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.